Hello, everyone, and welcome to week eight of USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorials. This is going to be a super important topic for the USMLE, whether it's step one, step two, or step three. So uh, let's go ahead. And before I begin, please subscribe to the channel, share this, let this free knowledge go viral so everyone in the world can benefit and ace this examination. Let's start with a high yield question here. So we'll start with this. So a 67 year old male comes to the ED with sudden onset weakness in his left arm and face. He has difficulty answering your questions. The CT is shown below. What vessel is most likely implicated? Is it the right ACA or the anterior cerebral artery, the left anterior cerebral artery, the right middle cerebral artery, or the left middle cerebral artery? And I promise we'll come back to this question at the very end after we're done. Give you a chance to think about this as we go through this uh, brief tutorial. So we're going to talk today about stroke or acute cerebral infarction. And before we begin, I want to make sure that everyone understands the difference between what a acute ischemic or acute stroke is and t a TIA or a transient ischemic attack. A TIA or a transient ischemic attack is a very brief focal neurological deficit that's reversible. That's the key. It's reversible. It usually lasts 15, 20 minutes, certainly not usually more than an hour, uh, maybe related to ischemia or emboli. Um, Typically, it can, it can present with amaurosis fugae with, where there's transient visual loss, but then you recover and everything is you know, fine. I mean, you may still have risk factors for developing stroke, but it's a reversible event. Whereas uh, acute cerebral infarction is irreversible. It's when you have uh, disruption of the blood flow, which ends up resulting in ischemia and then infarction of the brain parenchyma. That brain parenchyma becomes dead. Okay, and there are two types of strokes. Obviously, there's an there's an ischemic stroke, which we're going to talk about, and then there's a hemorrhagic stroke, which happens from you know blood bursting from the vessel and results in hemorrhage, and it results in infarction of the uh, brain parenchymal tissue. In ischemic strokes, which is what we're going to talk about, is when you have blockage of a vessel, blockage of a vessel that leads to ischemia and then infarction. And there's three types of uh, ischemic strokes. And really the clinical syndrome that you're gonna get on the USMLE is gonna be based on the mechanism and the vascular territory that's involved. So in terms of the mechanism, there's three mechanisms of an ischemic stroke, thrombotic, embolic, and hypoxic. So in thrombotic strokes, you have a clot that forms at the site where the vessel is blocked. And that's, it can be a clot in the ACA, the MCA, the PCA, um, and it's usually related to ruptured atherosclerotic plaque. That's what we commonly see. In an embolic stroke, usually emboli from somewhere distant to the brain comes and blocks the vessel. So maybe an emboli from atrial fibrillation, endocarditis, a DVT with a patent foramen of valley, something comes and blocks the vessel into the brain. And these can affect multiple vascular territories. So, you know, it may not just be the ACA or the anterior cerebral artery that is involved. It could be the ACA and the MCA. And finally, hypoxic strokes are related to hypoperfusion, very common in cardiovascular surgeries. And these typically affect watershed area. So there's a cortical watershed area between the ACA and the MCA that we're gonna talk about. Also a, a watershed area between the PCA and the MCA. And then there's also a watershed area between the deep and superficial vessels of the MC MCA, okay? And then the vascular territory, you know, whether it's the anterior cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery, or posterior cerebral artery, that's gonna affect the symptomatology that a patient presents with. And we'll go into all of this, uh, you know, as we go. But I want to first start with, you know, because they're likely going to show you a head CT. And I want to show you what a normal CT looks like in four, you know, selective images. So this image here, we're going to go, you know, from the vertex to the skull base. So from the forehead all the way down closer to the skull base and sequential images. So this is, you know, near the forehead. This midline structure is the false cerebri. Notice that we have, you know, these dark CSF fill spaces are the, uh, the sulci. Okay, notice we can see nice salsa here on this normal head CT. There's no extra axial fluid collections. This is the cortex here. And because we're near the forehead, all this stuff here is the, uh, the frontal lobe. And we have part of the posterior parietal lobe here. This is all going to be ACA territory. The anterior cerebral artery, for the most part, is going gonna, is gonna to provide supply this area here along the medial uh, uh, brain surface. Okay, the medial brain surface, particularly along the, uh, the frontal and the parietal lobes. As we come here, you know, more, you know, as we go down, you know, from the forehead down to the skull base, we're still, you know, pretty high, but you're starting to see, you know, the ventricle here, you know, this is, you know, part of the, the this is the lateral ventricle here, this is the third ventricle here we have, this is the sylvian fissure, this uh, CSF spills, 
field space here, Sylvia and Fisher, which demarcates the temporal lobe here. So this area here on the lateral surface of the brain is going to be MCA territory. This also here is the MCA territory. And those we can see, you know, we can see the cortical gyri, the cell side of the cortical gyri are, are you know, is, is part of the brain parenchyma here. We see part of, you know, if you're asking the temporal lobe, maybe beginning to see the occipital lobe here, but this lateral area here is all MCA territory. As we come here again, this is just a cut, you know, slightly inferiorly. Again, we're seeing the third ventricle here. This is all MCA territory along the Sylvian fissure. We're starting, because we can see the, uh, you know, occipital horn of the lateral ventricles here. This is, you know, part of the inferior medial aspect of the temporal lobe and then also part of the occipital lobe here. So this is actually gonna be the PCA territory. When you start to see, you know, along the posterior surface and maybe the inferior surface of the brain is usually supplied by the PCA um, and also, you know, the cerebellum um, and then a lot of the brain stem is, all, is PCA. And then here again, this is more PCA territory here. We have part of the MCA territory right here. Um, this is a supercell cistern, quadrigeminal plate cistern. And then here we have, you know, PCA territory here along the occipital lobe, uh, more along the inferior posterior aspect of the brain surface, okay? So um, I think that's really all you need to know for the USMLE. And then, you know, I wanna show you what an ACA infarct we're looking at. So an anterior cerebral artery infarct. It's gonna present classically with contralateral weakness and sensory loss, particularly within the lower extremity. So if you have, like in this case, you would, this patient would present with left lower extremity, like leg, knee, calf, foot, weakness and sensory loss. They may also have urinary incontinence, maybe some behavioral disturbances. They're gonna present with a right ACA infarct, okay? And you can notice that, you know, this is along the, near the forehead. This is, you know, along the medial aspect of the brain surface, right? And you can see all this hypoattenuation or dark density here, right? We no longer can see the sulci. The sulci, which you can see very well in the, le in the left hemisphere, have been totally effaced. There's, you know, gyral swelling, there's swelling, and then there's, you know, effacement of the salsa. We no longer see those, you know, dark CSF linear structures coming in here. So this is a nice example of what an ACA infarct would look like, okay? An MCA infarct would look like this. So again, we're, this is, you know, the Sylvian fissure here, and notice that there's this hypoattenuation or dark area that's effacing a lot of the salsa, blurring the great white matter differentiation, right? This is the gray matter right here. This is the white matter here, we don't, it becomes indistinct here. This is a nice example of what an MCA infarct would look like. Um, you can also have the, you know, hyperdense MCA sign. This is the vessel here, but we see it's bright because there's actually clot in the vessel. So the middle cerebral artery comes in like this, you know, this is a supracellar cistern. And then the, you know, the ACA is gonna rise up like this, but the MCA is gonna come like this and supply the lateral surface of the, of the temporal lobe. And because we have this dense material here, this is actually a clot within the, um, MCA, and that's another sign for an MCA infarct. In an MCA infarct, patient is classically going to present with contralateral weakness and sensory loss in the face and the upper extremity, much more than the lower extremity. So this patient, because it's a right MCA infarct, they're going to present with left facial weakness, sensory loss, left upper extremity, arm, elbow, hand, uh, sensory loss. They may also have homonymous hemianopia, which is, you know, when you have a visual field, visual field defect on, on the two right halves or the two left halves of the visual field. That's, it's just a fancy term for the two right halves or the two, le um, two left halves of your visual field, okay? And if the dominant hemisphere is involved, which is the left side, in this case it's not, but the left side, then you may have aphasia, difficulty speaking, okay? So this is what an MCA infarct would look like on a CT examination. A PCA infarct is gonna evolve the PCA or posterior cerebral artery territory. And again, we're, now we're in the occipital lobe here. We have hypotenuation, complete effacement of the sulci, gyral swelling, right? Lack of gray white matter differentiation. And we actually have some hemorrhage here. So this is actually a hemorrhagic infarct. Um, you know, this is what a hemorrhagic infarct would look like because this bright, you know, hyperdense material represents blood, blood products. So we have a hemorrhagic infarct in the left PCA territory, okay? And a PCA infarct, would present mainly with visual symptoms, right? So contralateral homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing. You may have visual hallucinations. You may uh, have inability to interpret sensation and recognize things. That's called agnosia. Agnosia, inability to interpret sensation and recognize things. You may not be able to read. You can still write, but you may not be able to read. 
maybe some cranial nerve palsies as well, but usually associate a PCA infarct with, you know, kind of visual symptoms, visual symptoms, visual hallucinations, things like that. And this is a nice example of what a left PCA or posterior cerebral artery infarct would be. That's hemorrhagic because there's blood products here. And then a watershed infarct, remember, happens from, you know, hypoxia or hypoperfusion, you know, commonly seen in, you know, cardiovascular surgeries. It affects the watershed area. So this area right here, for example, this hypoattenuation here, um, this is in the watershed area between the ACA and the MCA, right? So this is a cortical watershed area right here. This, you know, more here would have been like a watershed area of between, you know, the PCA and the MCA. But this is a watershed area here between the ACA and the MCA. And then even this hypo attenuation or and dark density here is a watershed area in the MCA between the superficial and deep vasculature or tributaries of the MCA. So we have a watershed infarct here. And, um, you know, again, this typically happens, you know, in patients that are have hypoxia, hypoxemia, um, cardiovascular surgeries is a high risk factor for watershed infarcts. Okay. So I want to, the, the things that you must know about the US Emily, um, you know, and they're going to be very basic. The questions, if you understand this table, you should be able to answer most of the questions on stroke on the US Emily. So for an ACA infarct, remember, contralateral weakness and sensory loss in the lower extremity. And remember, if it's, if it's the right lower extremity that's involved, then it's going to be a left ACA infarct. It's always the opposite side. It's always the opposite vessel, right, with the side that you're dealing with. You may also have urinary incontinence, which is a nice clue. You're looking for a gyral swelling and cell effacement with hypoattenuation or dark density in the brain along the anterior medial brain surface, the frontal parietal lobe, as I showed you. For an MCA infarct, you're looking for contralateral weakness and sensory loss in the face and upper extremity. So face and upper extremity, like shoulder, arms, elbows, hands, and homonymous hemianopia. So if you have weakness on the left side of your face and the left arm, it's going to be the right MCA that's infarcted. Again, you're looking for gyral swelling and sulcal effacement along the lateral brain surface, the temporal lobe, like I talked about. And for a PCA or a posterior cerebral artery infarct, you're looking for visual things like visual hallucinations, contralateral homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing, inability to read. Those are the clinical signs of symptoms. And again, you're looking for gyral swelling and sulcal effacement along the posterior and inferior brain surface, like the you know cerebellum occipital lobe. So I showed you all what the, all those look like normally, and then what they look like abnormally. So it's, the key is just to recognize where on the CT you're expecting the abnormal findings. So let's come back to this question here. So this is a 67 year old male who comes to the ED with sudden onset of weakness in his left arm and face, and he has difficulty answering your question. CT is shown below. Okay, so the key here is it's the left arm and face, right? That's what's weak. So we already know if it's face and left arm, that's gonna be MCA. MCA, and it's gonna be the right MCA. I don't even have to look at the CT and I know that the answer is gonna be right MCA, but if you know how to read CTs, it's very helpful because you can notice that this is the MCA territory, right? This is the Sylvian fissure. We have hypoattenuation. We have cell effacement, indistinct gray white matter differentiation. You know, I could have looked at the CT alone and been like, oh, okay, this is a right MCA infarct. But I could have looked at the question stem alone and been like, oh, this is a right MCA infarct. But if you, you know, if you know all of it, it makes the question extremely easy. So this is an example of a right MCA infarct. And as a bonus question, I just want to do this because this is a very high yield question, particularly for the step two exam. For those of you preparing for step two, a 59 year old female comes to the urgent care clinic with acute weakness in her left leg. Okay, so we already know that this is, she also complains of urinary incontinence. This is going to be a right ACA infarct, right? But that's not what the question is asking. The question is asking, what's the next best imaging test to order? Is it a CT head without contrast, CT with contrast, MRI head without contrast, MRI head with contrast? We're always going to do a CT without contrast, a dry CT. So that's always going to be the answer. That's going to be the first imaging test that you do because you want to rule out hemorrhage or a bleed. You always want to rule out blood um, when, when there's a stroke because you can't give TPA if the person is bleeding. So you always want to give TPA or, or tissue plasminogen activator uh, for patients that have acute ischemic strokes that are not hemorrhagic. And you want to do that within the first three hours of onset of symptoms. So that's a very important point as well. You always, even though CT may not detect the stroke for anywhere from like six hours to even two days. An MRI is much better, it can detect it within minutes, you know, up to five minutes, 30 minutes or so. You always wanna get a CT head without contrast as the initial workup when you're evaluating a patient for acute stroke. Hope that was helpful. Please subscribe, share this, make this you know, knowledge go viral, and I'll see you next week for another high yield tutorial. Thank you so much for your time and attention.